Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. This is Mike from the Retirement Train Straight Talk, where I give you the simple truth every day in every video from my perspective, right? All right, so I wish I knew the following five things prior to retirement. Now, this has probably been said several times in different ways, but I think all of us that are actually retired probably say the same thing. We just say it differently, right? So, you know, for me, it's always going to be interesting in the sense of what kind of spin can you put on it? But I'm just a straight shooter, so this is straight talk. So I'm going to tell you what I like it is from my perspective. Number one, it's time management, right? So um, it almost becomes second nature, right? Some folks can just sit around and, you know, watch the day go by. But for me, I got to write things down. Now, I know I'm only 63, but time management to me is important because um, I vowed when I retired, I want to use up time wisely because it, to me now, some folks it goes slow, but to me, the day goes by quickly. Let's, let's do some little adding. When you're working, you're probably up at 6, 6.30, maybe 7 latest. Take a shower, got to be in the office by 8 or 9. Well, heck, most folks here get up at 8 or 9, right? So that array is done. Why right? you take a shower or do what you're going to do, go walk in and then go take a shower. It's 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, right? Almost noon already. So boom, before you know it, the day is gone. And a lot of habits, and it's hard to break, is folks stay up late, right? Because they're watching TV. There's no schedule. You ain't got to go back to work tomorrow. I try to eliminate that and stay on a schedule and go to bed by no later than 10. I try to. But, you know, if I'm watching a movie, well, you know, it is what it is. It's just harder to get up the next day. I normally take Sundays because it's a church day. I take that off a little bit and don't exercise or anything. But we go shopping, do a few things around town. And um, anyway, time management itself is somewhat a challenge for a lot of people in retirement. Number two, your work relationships that you used to have at your old job. And I'm talking about you know, two weeks to six months after you retire, all right? You know, you're still fresh from the job and you're thinking about the guys and gals you work with, your workmates, and you're getting texts back and forth joking. They're asking you how retirement is for a reason because they want to know. And they, they're happy for you, hopefully. Some may not be, some may be envious. I don't know. But the truth is, after a while, It'll just be, hello, how you doing? And that's it. Or if you're on Facebook, I don't know, um, uh, whatever other avenue of communications you do, but mostly it's text for us, right? My workmates still text me after two years of work, but it's more mostly just, hey, how you doing? Or a joke or something like that. That's number two. Number three, um, adjust expenses. Wow. That's a big one, y'all, because... Like I've mentioned in other videos, right? When you're in retirement, your expenses are different than when you were actually working. And what I mean by that is when you're working, believe it or not, you're probably on a budget. You might not write it down, but you're on a budget because you only have so much income coming in a month, but you know what it is, right? In retirement, it's a little bit different because you're getting paid differently. When you're getting paid while you're working, it's normally bi-weekly, right? Every two, you get a paycheck. Well, sometimes in retirement, for a lot of folks, if you're just living on Social Security and um, withdrawals, right, from your 401k or your uh, deferred investments, well, you could probably take it when you want to, but mostly um, it's once or twice a month, maybe just once a month. But, you know, what I've done, I've adjusted things so I can kind of keep money moving at different times a month, right? So, but that adjustment on how you get paid, when you get paid, um, and how you spend your money is a big thing. For instance, mortgages. Now, I don't recommend anybody keeping a mortgage in retirement, y'all. I don't. But if you had to, it should be no more than, you know, 15, 20%. I say 15%. Um, just, just me. 15% of your income streams coming in. Uh, that's gross money. 
uh, although net's all it really matters to me, but gross wise, because that's what they do when you actually get a mortgage, right? It's no more than 25%. But for me, I'm, I'm at about 10% of my income. But I, I would recommend just from a spitballing conversation, right? No more than uh, probably 15% of your income because you want to be able to enjoy what you're doing in retirement, right? If you have to carry a mortgage. Now, I do recommend most folks don't have any mortgage, right? But that's a different conversation probably. But mine was low enough at 2.3%. I could have paid it off most likely. I, I just didn't want to do that. I could have used my money differently in other ways. Um, so anyway, yeah, adjusting your your expenses is the key in retirement. And part of that is how your income's coming in. Um, number four, you know, prior to retirement, um, you were probably focused on saving money, put money in your 401k, whatever your savings account, right? Um, you were in the accumulation phase, as we call it. Well, now in retirement, and I find this interesting for me and us as a family, now you're in the distribution phase. And you and your spouse may not see the same thing realistically. I still are, am a kind of like a, a conservative person, so I'm pretty thrifty in a sense. My wife wants to be a little bit more generous in her spending abilities, so she is. And God willing, well, love her to death, she's going to do what she's going to do. I'm still going to be conservative in my view. So those two conversations have to happen. After a while, for me, you know, I let her do what she wants to do because she's earned it too. She's worked 30, 35 years and so forth for herself. And got herself a pension and so forth and annuity. So that works out well for us. That's just our family. Um, you know. So that saving mentality now has to shift. And sometimes it's hard for us, right? Because we, we want to hold on to that money because we work so hard for it, right? But now you got to think about, well, eventually you got to spend it. Especially when you get in your 70s, right? Mandatory distributions kick in. I'm not sure when... How old you are out there in uh, YouTube land, but if you're anywhere near me and you were born 1960s, probably 74, 75, something like that. Excuse me, when they have to kick in and they're going to send you a good amount between four, four and a half, maybe five percent, depending on uh, that rating production in the sense of scale in your Social Security. Uh, Website, I believe it is. And you can look it up too. It'll tell you. I think it's 4%, something like that. But that could be a good chunk of change if you got a million dollars and sitting in your 401k. So what does that mean to you? Well, maybe you might want to start taking it sooner so that distribution is not as high, right? When you start taking it out. But, you know, high now, high later, uh, your tax rate will be affected, right? And now you're talking forty and a million dollars. You're talking about forty thousand dollars a year extra coming in on your tax bill, and then, unless it's a Roth, right? Or maybe you start uh, withdrawing it a little bit at a time and putting it in your um, uh, pro possibly your sandbox account, right? With 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 uh, Fidelity Schwab, whatever you're you're doing for keeping your your, your trading account, so to speak. Um, that's a possibility, too. Now you're just paying it on capital gains and dividends and so forth, vice, vice uh, broad distributions. That's a possibility. Those sorts of things, I think, have to be challenged and looked at. Um, and I, I got my guy flying out of here uh, pretty soon here. And next week, I believe, we're going to have a little sit down and talk about what's the best thing for us to do. Uh, my wife and I, because, you know, depending on where you're at financially and how big your nest egg is, well, there's consequences. It's weird, isn't it? It's consequences to have money, right? You worked your whole life. You got so much in your 401k, 403b, savings, 
you know, cash account, whatever, bonds. And, and, and now you got to decide, well, the man wants the money. Uncle Sam wants their money back. So you got to figure that whole thing out, right? But anyway, that's the next challenge is that focus on, you know, your distribution. All right, number five. Um, it's kind of going up back to time management, but, you know, when you're working, you know, when you go back to time management, um, you go from a little bit of time, excess time, to do things you want to do to, to all day. You're, you're at full time now, right? You have all this time, in a sense. Um, because when you're working, you got the weekend, right? You got a couple hours at night, maybe. But most of the time, it's on the weekends. You get everything done, so you're rushing around, making things happen for your, your lawn. Or, you know, if your wife and you are both working, it's laundry, um, all these things, your kids' stuff during the night, during the week, so you can't get stuff for yourself done, right? So all the stuff that you couldn't do due to minimal, minimal leftover hours, now you've got plenty of time to do that. So you ask yourself, what do I do now? How do you make that time uh, important enough for you to do the things that you want to do? And how do you prioritize? If you want to prioritize your, your, your stuff, that's what I do. I've always been that way, and it works well for me. For different folks, it doesn't matter. They like a blank slate. They think that's what retirement's all about. And it is for a lot of people. And that's a good thing. I just, I just can't get over keeping schedule. And it works well for me because I got a lot of things that, that I like to do, um, you know, but you don't realize that while you're working. You don't know that because you're not in the retirement world, right? You know, and that's why I keep saying folks on YouTube are coming on YouTube talking about retirement. They're not in retirement. Now, I find that hard to understand because on paper it looks good, right? You get the folks out there with the charts and the graphs, and, and I get it. But there's a lot more to it, the little things in life. And just charts and graphs in retirement. How you spend your time, right? Time management is very important. How, how you're going to adjust your expenses. Yeah, you can kind of get a ballpark figure and work it out on a piece of paper. At least you know the amount of money you want to spend. You should have that down. But how you spend it is going to be a challenge in the first six months to a year because you got to live it. You got you to see it happen. Um, and you don't realize that. And I wish I would have known it because I'm, you know, I'm to the letter type of guy. I try to stick to a schedule, prompt, always on time. You know, I, I like to know every nickel that's going out in the sense, right? But in retirement, that all changes. It really does for a lot of folk. And so you got to come to grips with that and just understand that it will change from the last day of your work life to the first day of your retirement life, and that week forward. It is going to change. But overall, man, ladies and gentlemen, the retired life is really good, right? If you and mama are on the same page and, and the kids are all gone, it's just you and her, things will change for you, and most likely for the better. Now, I'll just say it that way. You don't always have to travel to far places. You know, maybe you do that once, twice a year, but you, you take local trips. You know, you slow down a little bit. Life does slow down in retirement, and you got to take that for what it is because, you know, you want it to slow down, don't you, a little bit? You don't want to be 100 miles an hour all the time. When I said I like to stay busy, I do, but it's at my own pace, right? I want to keep my mind working. That's why I do these videos and try to talk to you about how life is for us in retirement. That's just us. I can't talk about anybody else. And I, and, I, and I think it works. The last thing I want to talk about, there's several financial programs out there. What I like to use, um, it's called the, the new, uh, I think it's called the New Life Planner, right? Um, and, and I think it, 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 it's really good. It breaks down everything for you. Um, and you really can't, you really just can't, mess things up and i think i i loved it yeah it, it's called 
the new retirement planner. And you can use the free portion of it at any time, just make an account. And it does a lot of it for you. It'll tell you where you stand, your success rate, if you're, you know, 99%, 89%. And if you are at a lower rate than where you want to be, you can do something about it. And you can make adjustments and see what you can do. If you buy the paid version, it's much more thorough, right? But I'm telling you, it in a lot of ways, it gets your taxes down to the mill a minute, so to speak. That's the paid portion of it. But if you just want the simple... Will I, you know, if I do, if I got this much income coming in and I do X, Y, and Z, take Social Security at this time and I spend this much amount of money, will my money last? That's what you all want to hear, isn't it? From folks who are living in retirement. I recommend you, you try to look it up. It's the new retirement planner. Just Google that and you'll find it. Open a free account. Do some time there with it. Play with it. Um, and that that's interesting in itself. Well, just for keepsake, I I did order my own cup here, the retirement train, as you can see, straight talk coffee mug, got a ball cap coming. Um, and heck, who knows if y'all like them, you might want to order one. Um, but I'm not going to put any store online until I know that's going to be something that folks really want, and they they can order their own uh, because it is a journey, right? We're all on a journey together in retirement. It doesn't happen in one day. It happens over 20, 30, maybe 40 year period, right? So um, every day becomes a journey. Your journey for that day, that month, that year, right? In any case, that's all I got for today. I hope that helps you. Those five things are important. Think about them prior to retirement. There's no right or wrong answer, y'all. It is retirement. Y'all take care and God bless. This has been Retirement Train Straight Talk. Out.